Recently, my brain was like, hey, remember Maleficent? And had me recalling watching it as a young teen back in 2014 and not exactly liking it. But now my older, more analytical self decided, eh, why not? And rewatched and actually liked it. If you're unaware, Disney had this thing around that time where it began remaking a lot of its older animated classics and live action films and went out of their way to give more nuance to some of the villains in the previous films, such as Cruella de Vili. You know, that lady who had 101 Dalmatians that wanted to kill and skid a truckload of Dalmatian puppies because she wanted authentic leather with natural spots on for clothing? Yeah, she got her own film. And I do not know what the Disney executives were smoking when they greenlit a film trying to make that crazy woman nuanced. But we're talking about Maleficent here, and Maleficent had to be the best villain to get started with this. In the original movie, she was this completely one-dimensional character whose entire motivation for cursing the Princess Aurora was that she was petty about the fact she wasn't invited to a baby shower, and that's about it. Maleficent was as much of a blank slate as they could get, and this film did a great job of reshaping her into a believable person. The film starts off with child Maleficent in Moors, the magical forest where she lives, helping out a human boy, Stefan, who trespassed and is stealing a gemstone because he's a poor peasant. Maleficent makes him give it back and escorts him to the human realm where they agree to meet up at the border later, with Stefan even throwing away an iron ring because it burns Maleficent when they shake hands. Iron burns fairies. I'm sorry. This moves Maleficent with how unhesitant he was to just throw the one thing of value he had just so they can keep meeting up. And over the years of having fun and bonding, they go from friends to lovers, with Maleficent's 16th birthday being marked by Stefan giving her a kiss as a gift and calling it True Love's Kiss. Although they end up drifting apart as Stefan finds work at the castle. You know, I live there. In the castle and still wants to see if he can fulfill his dream of one day living in it, giving up what could have been a loving relationship for a shot at wealth. And even more years pass with them apart, with Maleficent growing into a powerful guardian of the Moor, and the king of the human realm, fearing her power, tries to attack, but then his army is utterly decimated by the creatures of that place, and he sustains grievous wounds. His final act is to offer his crown to anyone who can kill Maleficent, and Stefan hearing this starts to see dollar signs, or sent signs as paper money wasn't a thing yet or whatever symbol used to represent money in medieval times i ain't looking it up and then goes to lure maleficent out of the forest with their past relationship and he actually does succeed in getting close to maleficent even having her forgive stefan for ditching her for a job at the castle and then stefan drugs her into a deep sleep and draws a knife to kill her then he pauses. He still loves this woman and undoubtedly recalls the good times and how nice she was to him and finds he can't murder her. But the allure of being king, having wealth, as he was surrounded by as a servant and fulfilling his dream of gaining it was just too much. Greed washed over him and Stefan... Well, he cuts off her frickin' wings. Like, Jesus Christ, how marginally better is that? And taking it back as proof Maleficent is dead, he becomes king. And Maleficent conscripts a crow to find out that the man manipulated then sliced off two of her limbs just to become king and is understandably pissed off. Becoming a sort of goth and brooding angrily about it for years, or maybe just one year, the timeline for events is not clear because she waits until Stefan and the queen of a daughter and Maleficent barges in to enact her revenge. And I'm surprised she didn't just come in to kill Stefan sooner. But I think that's because she wanted to wait for him to have a child so she can walk in and curse Aurora. First guaranteeing she would grow up to be beautiful, happy, and adored by all, then handing out her curse. On her 16th birthday, she will prick her finger on the spindle of a spinning wheel and fall into a sleep like death! Then adds that only true love's kiss could break it. Princess can be woken from her death sleep. Only by true love's kiss. Get it? Because I'm Maleficent 16, Stefan gave her what he called true love's kiss, then ditched her for the castle. Maleficent's anger is 
well, completely understandable considering what Stefan did to her just for money and power. Although her taking out on the kid is crossing a line, as Aurora herself did nothing wrong to her, and it's clear to me Maleficent picked her birth to get revenge because she knew it would drive a deep pain to the man, just like he did to her. And the man sends Aurora off with some friendly pixies to safeguard her for 16 years in a cottage. This is about the time where you would expect the dashing hero to start showing up at some point. But no, the filmmakers of Maleficent decide to deviate from their regular formula. The pixie guardians are woefully incompetent, like they arrive at the cottage in the woods and they immediately forget the baby outside. There you are. Why are you always hiding? Excuse me, what? Then when Aurora is hungry, they try to feed her carrots and I think radishes? And as a toddler, none of these three notice Aurora chasing after a butterfly and nearly falling off a cliff. And very good with children. My ass you are. And Maleficent's crow informs her of their inability, so she takes it upon herself to care for Aurora from afar, purely out of a selfish desire to ensure the girl actually makes it to her 16 and suffers the curse. And I like how as Maleficent continues to watch over Aurora, she slowly goes from looking on her with disgust and anger, only able to think about what Stefan did to her, then slowly warming as she well, basically raises her. Even to the point where Maleficent decides to bring Aurora into more because the girl expresses desire to check out the beauty of the place as she closes in on her 16th birthday. And once inside, I know it's no accident that we get a mirroring moment with how Maleficent met Stefan at the beginning of the film. Aurora is staring into the shrouded darkness and asking Maleficent to, hey, don't be afraid, come on out. And Maleficent says, all right, you're probably gonna be afraid of me and walks out, kind of like Stefan did with her. And Aurora is glad when the woman steps out, saying that she's always known someone was watching over her, and <laughs> calls Maleficent her fairy godmother, much to the older woman's bafflement. And Maleficent decides to keep taking Aurora there again and again, seeing her having fun and being happy, and Maleficent can't help but try and revoke the curse at this point. Over the years, and then now, realize that she is justified in having Stefan, but this kid did nothing to contribute to the betrayal and the cutting of her wings. A realization that came from, well, looking after Aurora and having the time to brood and consider her actions. And Maleficent didn't really need to take her to the moor in the first place. She did this as a spur of the moment thing, trying to give justifications to cursing the kid. She definitely expected Aurora to find her freaky, but she just didn't. Aurora didn't commit any crime, she didn't steal from the moor, nor try to hurt any of its people. So Maleficent, realizing she messed up here, seeks to undo her punishment unjustly given to Aurora. But unfortunately, while making the curse originally, Maleficent said that no force could ever break it, and that includes her. So now all she can do is just help Aurora find what happened as she can by returning to the moor and exploring it again and again being the only wreck offense Maleficent can possibly commit now. Even having a hard time trying to explain to this girl that she was responsible for wronging her in some way. And when Aurora suggests she come live in the moor with Maleficent as her 16th birthday comes along, Maleficent jumps at the idea because that's probably the safest place she can be. I really like this new character and think that the writers did a great job making Maleficent go from this one-dimensional sorceress with petty motivations to someone lifelike and believable. Maleficent's anger is understandable, but waiting for Aurora to be born just to curse her is not, yet it still makes sense when you think about it. I'm sure at one point we've all gotten so angry towards another person over something that we did something horrible in return, only to seriously regret it at the moment we calmed down. That's basically what happened here with Maleficent. She grew bitter at the loss of her wings and the manipulation of her feelings, but through caring for Aurora and, again, basically raising her from afar, she grew to bond and eventually care about her and realize, you know, this girl doesn't deserve her ire. She never did. Maleficent's new character isn't the only part I liked. I also enjoyed how the film took the original Sleeping Beauty's main theme of true love, you know, that concept that, let's be honest, doesn't exist, and flips it on his head. 
Stefan said he gifted Maleficent with True Love's kiss on her 16th birthday, yet he definitely didn't care that much about her because he immediately ditched her and only came back because of a chance at becoming king. Maleficent mockingly adding that the curse could only be broken by True Love's kiss. And then of course there's the entire scene where Aurora meets Prince Philip in the woods, because of course she does. The two are immediately smoten with one another and <laughs> they try to frame it as True Love's <laughs> they try to frame it as a true love's thing to, you know, trick us. And I'm absolutely certain most people watching this fell for it, including me and my entire family. That boy's the answer. <laughs> no, dear old. And of course, we have Maleficent here completely dismissing the idea that true love's kiss could work because in her eyes, such a thing does not exist and that's why she added it in the first place. Then we have Aurora explaining to her aunts her desire to leave on her 16th birthday because of her plans to move to the moor with Maleficent and that's when they decide to drop the bombshell about her father Stefan and tell her about the curse. Aurora then works out that well it's Maleficent who did this. No! Don't touch me! You're the evil that's in the world! It's admittedly a quite short exchange between them but when I think it does all that it's needed Maleficent immediately calls up her crow to find Prince Philip because even if Maleficent doesn't believe in true love's kiss, this is her one and only shot to try and make things right for Aurora. While Aurora speeds to the castle to meet her father, who's extremely distant and immediately locks Aurora up as the day of her birthday comes and the curse is soon to kick in. Yeah, the entire movie, Stefan's been growing into a more and more paranoid person about Maleficent coming for him to the point where he talks to her wings like it's her and even misses out on his wife's death, completely consumed by the idea she's gonna kill him soon, and completely fortifies the castle with iron and prepares to trap and kill Maleficent. Meanwhile, Aurora gets out of the locked room and finds an entire room of spinning wheels to prick her finger on, because of course she does, this is a story based on Sleeping Beauty, even though the original film just had one old spinning wheel in the room, but I guess the filmmakers wanted there to be options available, and Maleficent feels what has happened and marches into the castle knowing it's a trap and just ready to face anything stuff it's prepared for Aurora's sake. And of course brings Prince Philip in to have what has to be the most comical moment I've seen in a while with the three knockoff stooges. We don't even know where to start. True love doesn't just fall from trees, you know? They learn he's a prince and immediately drag him in to kiss Aurora, asking, well, really demanding he do so. And Philip is obviously and understandably conflicted about the fact that they're telling him to kiss an unconscious girl in her bed. I wonder if you're right about it. I barely know her. We've only met once. True that, buddy. Although peer pressure eventually gets them to do it and well, just look at the way they decided to frame this, the light peering in from behind, the soft music playing while Maleficent gazes on from the side, hopeful this will work, and it doesn't. I told you. Maleficent might be disappointed to have been proven right, but it's not completely unsurprised by this turn of events, saying she deserves no forgiveness from Aurora for allowing hate to consume her and curse an innocent child. Sweet Aurora, you stole what was left of my heart. Swearing no harm shall ever befall her comatose form so long as Maleficent lives. It's a really sad moment. It showcases the emotional bond formed, albeit from a distance. Then Maleficent just gives Aurora a parting kiss on the head. A simple yet effective way to express her feelings. And then Aurora wakes up and that's what made me love this film today. Not only does it recontextualize Maleficent into a far more believable character in this retelling of her part in Sleeping Beauty, but it also recontextualizes the idea of true love instead of just throwing it out completely. The film says true love is not something that happens at first sight, but a feeling that develops for a person over time. Real love does not come out of nowhere, but from forming a bond with somebody. And the tears Maleficent shed for Aurora comes from a deep place within her heart. Stefan, on the other hand, was completely distant and only really mad when he learned of Aurora's fate and just a bit because he really didn't spend much time with her to grow and 
form a serious emotional bond with her. Although I'll be real with everyone, when Prince Philip's kiss failed, I honestly thought the Crow Man would be the one to wake her up with a kiss because he too was there looking out for Aurora and seemed to deeply care for her, but I'm glad to have been proven an idiot because that wouldn't have been as narratively and emotionally satisfying as Maleficent's kiss. The remainder of the film is Stefan ambushing Maleficent as she tries to leave and Aurora finds and frees her wings which reattaches to Maleficent's body and aids her in escaping. She ends up overpowering and pinning Stefan to a wall, but she decides screw it and tries to just let go of the hate she's been brooding over because well it didn't help anyone before. But the man tries to tackle her off the castle, but Maleficent has wings and Stefan falls to a sad and inglorious death. He got all his power and wealth for a time, but was completely consumed with paranoia, fear, and completely missed on what could have actually been a really loving relationship with Maleficent. Aurora gets crowned ruler of both Moore and the human realm. For whom we have sacrificed the best years of our- <laughs> And we get Philip showing up at the coronation because, yeah, of course he does. Back then, I thought Maleficent was okay, but didn't really like it. But now, I really enjoyed what the film writers were trying to do here and think they did so successfully. If you haven't watched the film, try and do so, but for some reason it's not on Disney+, Plus. only the sequel of Maleficent Mistress of Evil, and I do not believe this film warranted a sequel, and I'm not going to watch it because I know it's going to be one of those things that's going to completely taint all the good feelings for the original film because it's just a completely unnecessary cash grab. If you like this video and are new to the channel, click that like button and comment your thoughts down below, and head over to check out my other video essays, music analysis, and overanalyzing Shira and the Princesses of Power videos. You might find them enjoyable as well, and please consider subscribing for more content like this to come.